Macros in Lear scripts serve as a means to streamline repetitive or complex tasks by defining text substitutions that can be parameterized. Anything starting with an at symbol can be replaced with a corresponding definition specified in the main header or subheader of your Lear script document. Commonly used macros such as author, logo, or comment provide basic functionality, but there are more possibilities to explore. Exactly. Macros serve as placeholders that can be customized with parameters, allowing you to avoid repetitive copy and paste actions. Lear script automatically recognizes these patterns and replaces them with the defined content. There are two types of macros, single line macros and block macros. Single line macros consist of a macro name followed by a colon, with the name starting with a word character. While the at symbol at the beginning is optional, it's recommended for custom macros to enhance readability. These macros return only a single line of output. By the way, macros are case sensitive, thus there is a difference between the following ones. Block macros don't have a colon after the macro name and continue parsing until they encounter the at end symbol. They can contain markdown content, HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, providing greater flexibility in defining custom elements or functionalities. Block macros also preserve white spaces and new lines, allowing you to format and structure content more precisely within the macro block. As you can see for at smile, macros can also call other macros. To comment out single line macros, you can use it at followed by the macro name. For block macros, you can use it at a followed by the macro name. This is useful for temporarily disabling macros or adding personal notes to your document without affecting its functionality. You can define macros within individual sections, which will override any macros with the same name defined in the main header. This allows for flexibility in customizing macros for specific sections of your document, such as changing the narrator's voice, adjusting authorship details, or any other customizations you may need. It is also possible to pass parameters to macros, which resembles calling a function in most common programming languages. Simply invoke a macro with parentheses and place everything you want to pass into the macro within them. The placement of each parameter within the macro is defined by an up followed by a number, such as at 0, at 1, up to at n. Just like in most programming languages where counting starts at 0, in Lear script, at 0 represents the first parameter. The following example illustrates how multiple parameters can be passed to a macro. They are simply separated by commas. However, a challenge arises when attempting to pass a string that contains commas. In such cases, the string must be enclosed in backticks. Additionally, as depicted, a macro can call or substitute another macro, which can be extremely useful for managing complexity. You can define simpler macros that call the complex one by setting default values, as described in the UID section. Last but not least, to continue with basic markdown syntax, it is also possible to pass multi-line parameters. This can be achieved by enclosing the multi-line content within a common markdown code block delimited by three backticks. As mentioned previously, it is advised to avoid the approach of passing multi-line parameters into single-line macros, as it can result in unattractive markdown code on platforms like GitHub or other markdown interpreters, editors. However, you can utilize a code block that includes information about syntax highlighting along with a macro defining the title. The content within the code block is then passed to the macro as the last multi-line parameter. There is a third option, which was added to support links. 
This means that when Lee a script is executed and you refer to a local reference, this reference needs to be translated into a global one, starting with https colon slash slash something dot something. Another benefit of applying such link parameters is that what you are referencing is still treated as a link by other markdown interpreters. As with code block parameters, the URL is passed as the last parameter, and if this is a relative one, the required protocol and origin are added automatically. The following example implements a load macro that fetches some code examples from the internet and dynamically integrates them into the LIA script document. For more information on how to integrate scripts into your document, see section JavaScript or JS components. The result looks as follows. The link parameters shall be loaded as expected, the first one probably not and the last one will fail definitely. You can find this example with more explanation at the following URL. In some cases, such as when you need to pass content to a JavaScript string and escape the content of the Lia script content, which could be a multi-line string, you can add a, to your macro, for example. Creating macros can be quite difficult, especially when it involves creating and calling nested macros with various parameters. Defining macros in Atom is somewhat akin to navigating in the dark, as it is not possible to inspect the DOM. However, you can escape a macro by adding an additional at, which outputs a gray and escape HTML precode block.